Auf dieser Reise durch Europa erleben wir viele außergewöhnliche Persönlichkeiten heute. Eine äh, wird uns noch aus Deutschland begegnen, jetzt in Berlin, wo wir Gabor Steingart gleich begrüßen dürfen. Er wurde letztes Jahr ausgezeichnet als Startup of the Year und seine Ansage ist, der Niedergang vieler klassischen Medien hat nichts mit dem Internet zu tun, sondern mit jahrzehntelang herbeigeführten Glaubwürdigkeitsverlust. Äh, Gabor Steingart kommt heute zu uns mit einem Beitrag, der heißt Journalismus neu denken. Äh, dieser Beitrag soll eine Ermunterung zum Anderssein liefern. Was er darunter versteht, erleben wir durch seine Tätigkeit äh, äh, mit Media Pioneer in Berlin. Äh, ich freue mich auf den Beitrag von Gabor Steingart zuvor, die Technik mit der Einblendung. Hello, everybody. Hello, Mr. Obau. Can you hear me? Thank you very much. All fine. Okay, perfect. Next to me is Chelsea Speaker, part of our team, and she's the manager of this media ship. And I thought maybe it's a good idea to, to come not alone to your Congress. What do you think about that? Perfect. Fine. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for letting me join. I guess I'll say a couple words about our media ship in just a couple of minutes, but I think Gabor, you'd like to begin. Gabor is yep. our founder and publisher of Media Pioneer. And first of all, I would like to, to, to thank you and the jury for, for this uh, outstanding award. Uh, we are excited to, to, to take it and to keep it and to, to defend our ideas and our project. And uh, we will hope to, to inspire some others all over the place um, to, to invent something new, to try something new. Um, and so, yeah, let's maybe jump directly in, in, in the presentation and to give you some ideas and then let's discuss. Um, Media Pioneer is our name and um, we are producing content for, for our website, for our app. We are producing a lot of podcasts, newsletters and also live events. And um, the core of the core of our idea is to be independent. And uh, to be independent means to be ad-free and to be politically independent. We would never accept any politicians uh, in, in a kind of board of directors, like uh, half of the journalists in, in Germany, they, they have politicians in their supervisory boards in the, in the public uh, sector. You know what I mean? And, um, so the core of the core of Media Pioneer is to be ad-free, to be independent, even from big advertising spenders, big pharma, big oil, uh, big finance, and um, also independent from politicians. Uh, we are only uh, dependent from our readers, viewers, and supporters. Uh, so this is, uh, I think, new for most of the media because the traditional business model of media is, is quite different. Um, so uh, let's see maybe the, our first chart. Can we, ah, and I can make it by myself. Huh? Okay, so I've listened to, to, to some of my, my colleagues in, on your Congress um, and it's, uh, it's always amazing on this, uh, on this Congress. We, we also uh, learn about success stories. Uh, the subscribers are going uh, through the roof. Uh, going up, everything is going up, but that's not true. Uh, to set the record straight, right from the beginning, uh, dear colleagues uh, in, in, in Europe, in Vienna, wherever you can listen, um, we're in a, in a deep media depression. And that's a, a kind of a disruptive uh, process uh, in, in three directions. Uh, most of the traditional legacy newspapers, um, but also the radio are, are losing losing listeners, losing readers, losing subscribers. That's, that's for sure. You can check the numbers. It's, it's not all the same for everybody, but um, if you look at our 
industry in total in the US and Great Britain and in Europe, in Germany, you will have a decline in subscribers. Second, we have a heavy loss in advertisement. Advertisement is going social, is going elsewhere, but it's, it's, uh, it's going out of traditional media. Um, if, you, uh, if you are a journalist and if you, you're not quite sure about this development, please ask your uh, advertising sales uh, director in, in your uh, publishing house. He, he will uh, maybe share uh, some, some insights with you. Uh, and third, um, a lot of media is, is losing traction with readers and viewers. Uh, we have a heavy loss of trust. Um, this is, uh, has nothing to do with the internet. That has, has a lot to do with our behavior during the last decades. A lot of journalists have, have changed, uh, have changed uh, the job description. They are not curious anymore. They, they are activists. They have become activists. Uh, and uh, I believe, and our project believes, that a journalist has to describe the world, even if the world is going down in total. Um, we, it's not our job to save the world. It's our job to describe the world as it is. And um, this makes a, a huge difference in, in, a, in the job description for, for journalism. So we started something new, uh, and it's it's sometimes it's 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 cruel. Uh, we have learned from the colleagues from the side, uh, yeah, that Giovanni De Lorenzo says we need a revolution, but uh, no brutality, cruel, cruelty. But markets are different. Um, look at the, the, the car industry. It started uh, nearly 120 years ago. This is Fifth Avenue in, in New York. Um, you see um, that only one car, uh, we have made a kind of uh, red uh, cycle around this one car. All the others are coaches, are, are horses and coaches. Uh, this is Fifth Avenue 120 years ago. A couple of years later, uh, only one uh, horse coach and a lot of cars. Um, uh, this was a revolution with a lot of cruelty, a lot of brutality, because uh, the owners of the horses, they are out of the market. Uh, and the horse has no, has no uh, relevance for transportation anymore. I look at uh, our own um, uh, media system. Uh, when we started, uh, when I started, uh, that was the subway I, I used to. to to drive to Der Spiegel at that time. And everybody was reading something on paper. That's our uh, equivalent to today. Uh, people are acting like journalists. They are not waiting for this one uh, uh, star photographer uh, at the Petersplatz, uh, waiting for the Pope. They are doing their own pictures and they share their own pictures. So people have become journalists. Everybody's a journalist right now. So this is, is, a, is a, a very brutal, uh, uh, sentence for, for a lot of journalists in traditional media that the readers are not stupid and not only not stupid, they know a lot about that subject and they try to articulate themselves and to share their knowledge. And uh, so we have started our mission um, nearly one year ago. Chelsea, please mm -hmm. give us some oversight. What, what are you doing here? Yeah, thanks, Gabor. And also, uh, thank you. Thank you for me. I'm so proud to be part of this distinguished group of colleagues who have also been um, been given this amazing award. So thank you very much. Um, I think we're both very proud of that and our whole team is as well. Um, so three years ago, when we when we founded Media Pioneer and back in 2018, I was the first employee of the company and uh, Gabor had a very visionary idea that um, our new media brand cannot be just in a normal office. The idea was to have an office that moves and that goes through the center of Berlin and looks over the shoulders of all of the politicians working in, in downtown Berlin and in the Bundestag. And um, he noticed that, that Berlin is, is unique in that it has a river that goes straight through the government quarter. And so the idea kind of, um, kind of was surprising to me, I think, and surprising to a lot of other people. 
but um, somehow it made sense. And so back in 2018, I started researching um, how, how we could make this project come true and uh, found a shipping company that we now work with and have been since 2018, found a, um, a ship builder on the, on the Rhine River who uh, built the ship for us. And so we had this ship built from the first piece of steel all the way up. It's not um, an old ship that we had had um, re refurbished or anything. It's actually a completely new ship. It's electrically powered. It's 40 meters long and seven meters wide. And um, as you can see in this slide, I got to be the, um, the godmother of the ship, which is something I never thought I would do in my life. But there I was, that was last year, 2020 in March, where we christened the ship over on the Rhine and then brought it over to Berlin back in May of last year. Maybe we can move to the next slide. Um, so this is what our ship looks like um, in the technical drawing it's like i said 40 meters long seven meters wide it's 3.8 meters tall because in berlin we have um, a lot of low bridges that we have to get through in the back portion of the ship we have a, a recording studio where we record our different podcasts not only shangat's morning briefing but all um, the world briefing um our tech briefing all of the different podcasts that we have in our growing palette of of products um, all of that is done in the in the recording studio right here on the ship, whether we are driving with the ship or not. So that's a um, a room in room concept, so that you don't hear any of the sounds of the ship because you still have, of course, a rudder and a propeller. But the ship really makes no noise anyway because it's electrically powered. And so when you're on the ship the first time we left the port with it, um, I didn't even notice that we had left because you really hear nothing. It's like being in an electric in an electric car. Um, the rest of the the rest of the rooms in the back are functional rooms. We have a big newsroom where our editorial staff sits every day, and we often get the question: Does the ship actually move around every day, and do people actually work on it? Yes, and yes, we do. Um, and the newsroom is uh, conceptualized as a really flexible room, so that we can take out all of the furniture within just a matter of minutes and turn it into um, a place where we do different kinds of events. And in the front of the ship, which is where we're sitting right now, is our briefing room where we have a big round table and we often do uh, interviews. We have an upper deck for the nice summer months that we have right now so that we have done a bunch of formats um, out in the fresh air as well. Um, we have seven uh, HD cameras in the in the lower part of the ship that can record any of the of the formats that we do down here. We have two on the upper deck as well, so that we can um, so that we're really flexible with the with the events that we do here and can always uh, stream within um, a matter of seconds. Um, the ship has uh, room for 200 people, and um, of course, with the Corona crisis in the last couple in the last year. We haven't been able to have that many people on the ship, but we have done smaller events. And I think if we go a, another slide, let me see. We can see. Okay, there's me. <laughs> um, that was that was one format that we did last summer, floating cinema, where we turned all of the all of the furniture and um, used the used the screen that we have at the front, and we talked with the director of the film and with one of the main. Uh, protagonists in the film and did a really interactive format with a small group of people on the ship. Um, then we have had all sorts of all sorts of uh, celebrities. celebrities on board the ship. We have uh, all the big names from politics and culture and uh, business. Just one example here. Can, can you all see the pictures uh, Chelsea is talking about? I hope so. Mr. Obauer, can you see the pictures? It's all perfect, beautiful. It's Wonderful. All, okay, perfect. So this is Veronica Ferris. So next picture. Yeah, next picture. This is um, when Gabor's new book came out last year. We did a whole uh, series of book presentations on the ship where we talked with small groups of people. I think we always had about 30 or 40 people and um, really got to discuss with them. It was a, a lot of dialogue. Um, we didn't, we don't wanna just be sitting up on the stage talking about ourselves. Um, and one of the main things that we want with our work 
is to talk to our readers and to our listeners. And so that was a format that worked really well for that. And, and, yeah. and the, the important point here is that we are not doing events like a theater or a restaurant or, or a bookstore. We are doing media events. So this is the starting point, but not the, the, the end point of, a, of, of an event. We are starting here. We are doing this presentation. 200 people uh, could be involved on the ship. Here we, we had the corona uh, circumstances, but uh, we are streaming. Uh, we are producing videos, we are producing podcasts. So on a lot of different ways, the content we are producing here in this, in this studio, see it as a studio, um, uh, is, is, is uh, yeah, we, we carry it out to our readers and viewers. So with a book presentation, normally if I'm doing a book tour in Germany, I reach at one evening 100 people, sometimes 200 people. Here we are reaching 20, 30,000 people. And we can also, if, if we develop our, our, uh, our viewership, we can, can reach 200, 300,000 people with a normal book presentation or with a live concert and with all the things. So the, the ship is working as a studio and all the events are the starting point of a media production line. Um. I don't know if you hear it in the background. Maybe you're asking what that sound is in the background. We're actually just leaving the port right now on the ship. We're leaving. And so this is actually the only time that you hear anything from the noises that the ship makes because we're moving backwards. And as soon as we've turned around, it will be silent. So I hope it's not too much of an issue right now. Um, this is another format that we had last summer. Um, this was political sightseeing is what we called it. Um, with Gerhard Schröder, the one was political sightseeing and one was um, the uh, presentation of his new film that he did. Um, and uh, so we have, like we said, um, all of the big names from politics and, uh, and business here on board. And we always have our, um, our readers and listeners here listening as interviews are being, are, are being uh, conducted that we then use for our different podcasts and newsletter formats. So why journalism? I think even um, if I would say that we are in a severe crisis as, a, as an industry, um, I should add that only the old business is in a crisis. And why journalism? Because journalism matters. And journalism uh, will never die. It's, it's like music, um, like rock and roll. Um, the instruments will change, the technique will change, um, um, and the people will change. Uh, uh, the lyrics will change, but the music will stay alive and will keep us alive. And that's the same with journalism. Journalism is like rock and roll without notes. So um, journalism is for me and for our project, just another word for dialogue. And uh, dialogue, not in the old sense that we are, uh, the, we are preaching something like in the church or at university and uh, people should listen and uh, repeat. No, people can argue, people can exchange their idea, their knowledge, their experience. So dialogue um, is important. And traditional media tries, and that's important, tries to use social media. I would say we have to socialize ourselves. We have to become a social media, a, a good media citizen of, of our community. Uh, for, for all the mind-stretching people, we are a partner, uh, not the boss. And to, to be a partner is sometimes is difficult. And we have to discover all sorts of ways to become a good partner um, of, of our readers and viewers so that they are part of, of the mission. And um, I would say we are all at the beginning of this journey. Uh, because I know that uh, Mr. Ober and all, all the listeners uh, are in love with some, some hard facts. This is our, our reach in the morning. Every morning we, we reach out to 750,000 um, readers in, in Germany. Um, 200,000 something is our own. This is the newsletter where we have the day data and the, the addresses and all the others are corporation partners. We, we are doing uh, syndi syndicated journalism, so we sell our content to a lot of platforms. They are paying some money. We are the only, the only German news outlet which gets money from Bloomberg because we are on the Bloomberg terminal every morning because they think it's, it's important for their uh, readers, for the hedge fund managers, for the investors, for the fat cats on Wall Street and in Frankfurt and in Paris and London to know what's going on in, the, in, in this German uh, capital. 
and in this German market. So, but also a lot of other outlets. The podcast comes on top. The morning briefing podcast. So, I think um, maybe in one year we will cross uh, one million. And there you see, for a, a startup, you gave us the the award for a European startup. For a startup, if you compare this seven hundred fifty thousand with traditional media, hundreds of subscribers, nearly one hundred thousand. Uh, the FAZ, our, I would say, biggest traditional newspaper, um, just around uh, 300, 300,000. So this is double the size um, and the readership of FAZ. In, in one hour, just, just one, well, two products in the morning. So at seven o'clock, we have already reached our target group for the first time. Um, we are doing this not only with the, with the newsletter, uh, different sorts of newsletter, but we have created a lot of a podcast, uh, the the A Day of Security Briefing. Um, uh, our former um, chief economist to the government is now doing a podcast. We started it yesterday. Sigma Gabriel, our vice chancellor and foreign secretary, is doing a world briefing with Chelsea together every every month. Every month, and we are doing the next one tomorrow, tomorrow. Uh, right mm-hmm. up. After, after, after Putin and Biden met each other in Brussels, uh, he, will, he will jump on our boat and uh, we will do uh, the podcast directly for the next morning so that our readers and viewers, listeners could, could listen to Sigma Gabriel and his judgment on this uh, maybe historic uh, meeting between Putin and Biden Wednesday afternoon. And uh, yeah, we are, we are, we are uh, on message on Thursday morning. Um, we are not alone. Uh, we, we, we would not claim we are the only uh, new media in, in the world. Chelsea, tell us more why we are not alone. Oh, well, um, there, are, there are a number of other media um, where we think that they are, they're also not legacy media. They also try to, um, to have a deeper connection with their, with their readers and go deeper into the material that they're researching. Um, for example, Politico or Zetland or, um, or Axios are some of the big ones that we look at and say um, they're doing things that we can, that we can, um, that we can also learn from. So um, they, um, they're also not all ad free, but we think that they're doing a lot of things that, um, that we can learn from in terms of citizen journalism, kind of a grassroots um, way of thinking about doing journalism. All right. And now we are ready for your questions. And I would say thank you for listening so far. <laughs> thank you very much, both of you, for this uh, very interesting explanations. Uh, one uh, ask uh, to Gabor, uh, if you could start once more with your idea, uh, would you start also a second time with the boat or you would uh, find another idea? <laughs> I, I, I think the, the idea with the boat uh, is, is still working very well for, for our mission because we have a, a home. We have something to see and to touch. We are living in digital times, that's true, but people like to, to get in touch, not only with each other, but also with a kind of, I would say, steel with, with, the, with the media in total, so they can visit us. We have an, a home address. If Henry Kissinger says to the European governments, give me your telephone number, where's your telephone number? You as a Europeans, I have only a French number, a Belgian number, give me the one telephone number. In our case, we have not only a telephone number, we have an address and we, we are visible. We are inside the city. We are in the center of Berlin. We are cruising all day, as Chelsea told us, between the parliament and the chancellor. So Ms. Merkel can see each other. And our message is very clear. We are watching you guys. We are watching you. And so that's why the boat is not just a, a metaphor. It's also a working space, but it's, it's, a, it's a perfect symbol uh, for our mission. And I have to say, just from um, uh, the perspective of people who actually do you know, work here every day, it has, um, it has a really special feeling to it also 
because you're moving all day long and has a certain degree of dynamism that you don't have in a normal kind of office where you're, you know, in one, one place and you have your one phone. And um, it, I think that it helps the creativity of the people who work here also. That's just my perspective on working here every day. I think that, I think that it helps us to think a little bit outside the box also. Maybe, maybe it's just my own uh, romantic idea of what it should be like. But I, I, think, I think it does add something to our editorial work. <laughs> I, I think I know what you mean because I'm also a, a, a sailor and I like the water. <laughs> one, one more question. Uh, what do you think? Uh, did you uh, could you uh, copy your idea in other cities, maybe Hamburg or Vienna or Budapest or however London? Uh, uh, what do you think? See, we uh, will we see Gabriel Steingart also in other cities uh, in the future? <laughs> maybe uh, it's too. It's maybe it, it, it's too early to talk about. But one thing is for sure: uh, we are we are leaving Berlin uh, during the, the the last, I would say, two or three months of the election campaign in Germany. Um, we are leaving uh, Berlin. We are uh, starting, I would say, in the south, in Konstanz, something like this. And from the south, we are going back to Berlin, um, uh, city by city. And uh, we are on a listening tour. So so we invite all. All of you, uh, by the way, but also our listeners and viewers to come on board to see what we are doing, to argue, to, to bring in their ideas. And we will, we will collect all, all the ideas for, for a new government. And at the end of the tour, we will put all these ideas, maybe hundreds, maybe thousands, in little bottles. Uh, these uh, will be bottles which uh, are... Uh, they are lightning from from inside it's uh, with some phosphor they so we bring them um, into the government district of berlin all the wishes and uh, also the strong wishes of the people so this is a is a kind of tour where we are leaving berlin and we are crossing all all over our country we are starting with our country first then we came to vienna Gabo, I, I know you are an excellent journalist, but you are, you, it seems you are an excellent poet. Yeah, I, I hope I can read uh, something more from your ideas in the future. And maybe you and your team get another prize for poets. The best for you, your team. Uh, thank you for your explanations to Berlin. Bye-bye. Uh, See you, hope, uh, next in Vienna or anywhere. Uh, uh. One, one second. Also for you, uh, Mr. Oba, but also for our, all our listeners, whoever is, is on our tour or, or comes to Berlin, uh, all our colleagues from Hamburg, from Düsseldorf, but also maybe from, from, uh, from London, uh, you are invited. Uh, give us a call. Go to our website. You see our telephone number, our email. Give us a call. Um, and don't hesitate uh, to jump on the boat and to be part of it, even for one hour. So everybody's invited. Okay, that's Thank our. Thank you very much, Gabo. Thank you very much.